It's a couple practices in reasonably short order for you. You don't get an opportunity to get that many in. Well, I mean, what were you guys drilling down on and working on? Yeah, so a little bit of um, you try to really take advantage of days like this to clean up anything that happened in the game that guys have questions on, whether it could be side out of bounds, out of bounds underneath, just to give ourselves a chance, uh, every opportunity, every possession. Uh, looking forward to the Atlanta game, uh, how they uh, defend uh, some situations that can give us some confidence once we play those guys. And so uh, trying to toggle and, and do a little bit of both on a day like this. Now Atlanta, you guys have had a tough schedule. Uh, you've only played four losing teams. Granted, you beat them all. but. Now when you're playing a team like Atlanta, another team that's you know, not in the losing category, a competitive team, what are some of the keys in terms of not just Atlanta, but yeah. in being able to get over the hump and be able to close out games against those quality teams? Yeah, it's, it's a discipline, Brian. It is a uh, leaning more into always instead of sometimes. And uh, we have been sometimes pretty good in possessions. We need to shift that to always, whether that is always uh, defending and being in our right position, whether that's always kicking the ball ahead and having multiple ball handling, whether that's always playing with pace uh, once we get a rebound. So that's our challenge as a group. And when you play the better team, it just gets emphasized even more. Because if you don't do it, you're going to lose. Uh, and so for us, we're learning those lessons, especially when you play high-level teams. In terms of injury updates, anything new on Ben or Cam? Uh, let's see. Uh, no updates for you. Ben and uh, Dennis and Cam will not travel to Atlanta and will not play in Atlanta. Dennis will get a MRI uh, today and then we'll see what that looks like. When you look at the offense, um, at least from the game against Philly, did you feel the struggles were more about creating advantages or like maintaining them once, uh, once you saw them? Yeah, it's interesting. When you have a big like Embiid at the rim, that's always going to present a problem for us uh, just because we have a handful of guys who have historically been able to drive the basketball and punish someone at the rim. We watch some of those clips as a team to see uh, are there opportunities where we could at least keep our dribble, drag that big out, and then maybe create some drive and kick opportunities from that. We can always get to a midi pull-up, without a doubt. Every dude can do that every single possession. So are we disciplined enough to try to make the defense pay when they have a, a big at the rim? And then just looking at Atlanta, one of the things that's been different about them this year is they're playing a little faster, and they got guys like Jalen Johnson in the lineup. What are you seeing other than, I guess, an increased pace? Yeah, Johnson's playing at a high level. Dude is averaging 15 points, shooting the basketball well from three, playing with a stream amount of confidence, a guy that can get up and down. And when you have two dynamic guards in Murray and, and Young, their ability to handle the basketball make you collapse because they can get to the rim also. Uh, so definitely a disciplined game where you don't want to allow like a Johnson to have an extreme impact on the game, a Bogdanovich to have an extreme impact on the game and then disciplined enough to not foul Trey Young also. So a lot of areas you got to cover uh, when you're playing high-level teams. And Trey beat you, I guess, last year when you guys, when Spencer was afraid to get the foul. He had that one at the buzzer. It, it, interesting. I mean, he's right behind him on that play. Yeah. And uh, uh, But, you know, Trey is a, a guy that uh, has learned how to put himself in a position and makes you tough. Uh, whether you're going to reach, whether you're going to come over, take a charge, whether you're going to uh, be vertical at the rim against him. So uh, he puts pressure on you. Understanding that every team goes through big injuries, how difficult is it to build chemistry when you have so many big parts of your identity sitting out right now? Yeah, I kind of look at it the other way. It's like we're figuring things out along the way also, uh, whether that is putting a guy like uh, Trenton Wofford in as our backup point guard and let him figure out how he can impact the game, uh, whether that is putting Dayron and Nick in at the same time for a possession the other day and see if we could be big and, and get a stop out of, out of bounds underneath. So those opportunities wouldn't present themselves if we had those other guys available. Now, I do want them available. Uh, that makes us whole and healthy and, and look forward to that. But I think you just try to figure things out. You stay in this space right here, see how you can get the most out of this group, the potential out of this group, and then keep building from there. Do you feel like that knowledge is something that can help you down the stretch? If you embrace it, yes. And so uh, I, I think we've learned how to, uh, what multiple ball handlers can do for us. Instead of having the ball in one guy's hand, coming back to the basketball, how we can play with pace after makes, after misses, after we get a rebound, why that's so important for us. Those lessons sometimes hard to uh, grab a hold to, but uh, definitely good for us to learn from. For the 
untrained eye, I mean, Cam's shot looks the same as it always does. But what have you seen in the last five games pretty much since he's come back? It's really just, you know, he didn't get a bunch of time with Team USA as far as minutes on the floor. And so he was also getting his workout in before and after those games and workouts. And then to come back and not get a bunch of playing with us and um, in the preseason. So just still feeling this game out, uh, where he's going to get his shots from, um, the difference in the offense. I'll lean into the you know, historical data. He'll be able to make shots and, and uh, create for us. Uh, the challenge again, how can he impact the whole game for us uh, because of the minutes that he plays, rebounding the basketball, being in the right spot to help us off the ball defensively. So those things we'll keep challenging with. The offense, it'll, it'll come. We talked to Cam after his event last week with Welfare at Marcy Playground. As someone who's been in Brooklyn for longer than I think pretty much everyone on this roster, what advice do you have for guys about kind of ingraining themselves in the community? Man, this is an unbelievable community. Dive into it, uh, embrace it, be a part of it. That, that's the best part of, of being here in Brooklyn. Reason I always wanted to live here and, and uh, to, to feel the people, to feel the, the borough um, uh, appreciative. Uh, and for, for Cam to have his time and, and spend it in, in a uh, thankful way, uh, pretty cool. Uh, you said that Dennis was getting an MRI. Has he gotten worse since Sunday? Um, well, in fact, he's not playing. And so, you know, that's kind of our steps a little bit. Uh, you let a guy get clinically diagnosed. You hopefully it's an acute injury, and then you see if uh, he can get some treatment and get back on the floor. Well, we had a couple of days of treatment. He's not back on the floor. So then we'll take the next step and get an MRI. So uh, Cam, meaning Cam Thomas, Thomas, would get reevaluated when you come back? Maybe yeah, I think we'll... Reevaluate in two weeks. That'd be like Yeah, I think we'll have some for you. Uh, the next day we get together, we'll probably have some for you. Would his reevaluation... And I know I asked this before, you weren't sure yet. Would his reevaluation require more imaging, like another MRI, or is it just uh, a to my thing? To my knowledge, he, he is heading in the right direction, and uh, unless we want to be extremely, uh, I don't know, proficient in, in giving him an a MRI to compare to, uh, my knowledge, he won't need another MRI that uh, he's building towards getting back on the floor. Has Ben been able to do it and taking a little bit extra in the last couple of days? Uh, he's just still doing what he was doing as far as um, off the court stuff, um, but not in practice or anything of that nature. Chuck, the uh, lack of turnovers forced for you guys yeah. obviously been a hot topic. And you, know, you talked about the willingness to gamble and take risks. Is there anything differently schematically that you guys can do to kind of improve yourselves in that area? Yeah, Eric, you know, we've really taken the most risk uh, as a team or put our guys in a position, you know, schematically to take risks. Um, you know, it's really just getting our guys comfortable with the result. And, uh, you know, sometimes you get a little on edge, especially when you're playing high quality teams and you're saying, OK, let's put ourselves in a position where my guy that I'm guarding might get an open shot. Um, and so that being in that uncomfortable zone, we got to make our guys comfortable being in that zone and being able to still take risks and a gamble. We'll, we'll still you know, push that envelope. I think it's important for us. It, it's huge in our defensive efficiency. Uh, why we're not being rewarded for whether how good we're rebounding and not fouling, it's, it's huge in, in that category. So uh, we'll continue to try to come up with, with concepts to push our guys towards that direction.